When I first heard that Kingdom Come Deliverance was going to be arriving on the Switch, I was first of all extremely excited. I absolutely adore this game, played it back in the day, but also skeptical of what they could do on, you know, the Switch hardware. Naturally, this is a massive open world game and it was going to take a lot to even get it, I guess, functioning on the Switch hardware. Well, that kind of concern turned to excitement when I heard that Sabre were behind the port and they previously worked on The Witcher 3, another game that you could largely consider an impossible game for the system. Well, today I'm getting hands-on with the first couple of hours of gameplay. This was via the Japanese eShop release, which did go live just a little bit earlier. And I'm going to be running you through what you can expect, what I have seen so far, and all of the different performance details. My name's Alex, this is Switch Corner. If you do enjoy this video, subscribe. And first of all, I do want to give a warning about following my path of importing the game from Japan. Rather than telling you, let me show you what the issue is. So yeah, as you can see there, basically what we have is English text, that's for subtitles, menus, basically the entire game is written in English and it's completely playable, but the audio is locked to Japanese and there's currently no way to change it, that is fully locked out. There is no selection at all, whether you're in-game or on the main menu itself. Of course, it's going to be easy to read through the core conversations, but I would suggest waiting because, you know, you're basically going to miss out here in this world on a lot of overheard conversations in the world. Subtitles here appear above characters' heads, even if you're not talking to them, and there's so many going on that it really kind of elevates that world building. On with the game anyway, so the story here, we follow Henry, a blacksmith's son. Essentially, in the opening moments of the game, we are helping out our father. We are creating and crafting a new sword for the king, and to do that, we need to collect up some different items. This gives us a chance to learn Henry's personality. He seems to have a, let's say, a taste for drinking with his friends. He definitely gets into a little bit of trouble. But generally, he seems like a good guy that's very caring about those, the world, and the town he lives in. Unfortunately, this situation doesn't last long. An invading force appears, and we basically have to flee after witnessing the murder of friends, and we essentially didn't make it to the castle in time. The gates are now closing. So yeah, I'd say basically you've got this character here, very young, kind of naive, Definitely has an interest in weapons, but zero ability. And we're going to be following him on this journey, going through training and essentially setting out on a revenge mission alongside a force of individuals that are basically rebelling against this invading force. The gameplay, and I played this originally on PlayStation, and just as a warning, this can be a slow burner of an experience. It won't be for everyone. They've definitely aimed for a level of realism. So think here, survival elements. Henry gets tired. He gets hungry. You need to manage all of these different, you know, features. He has stamina that we need to also keep track of. And the game, frankly, can be incredibly challenging. Now, there's two difficulty options when you do boot into the game for the first time. And even on easy, this game will often destroy you. It is not an experience where... You can go, you know, one against, let's say, five enemies. It's very much designed around one-on-one -on -one combat. Should you see opposing forces of that size, often the best, honestly, the best option is going to be just to simply run away. And the gameplay generally is made up of exploration, multiple quests. And what I really like about the different quests in this world are not only are some optional and some considered, you know, that main storyline, but there's plenty of different ways to complete them. It really makes you aware of this as well in the opening moments. There's an individual that owes your father money. He refuses to pay up and you can report back to your father, basically inform him of what has happened. Alternatively, though, you can try and sneak into his property and steal all of these goods. You could also just simply try and punch his lights out and take the weapons back. That's a really cool feature because it's going to really allow you to kind of tailor your character and every one of these initial decisions in this world, they're very much making an impact on your character, whether it's improving his speech ability for negotiation, whether it's improving his strength. There's a lot of stats here in this world you're going to want to manage. Also with the combat as well, it starts to introduce it very early on. And the idea here is it's not just button mashing, rather we're going to use inputs to say, 
from what angle we swing our sword or where we are aiming our bow. It's definitely a lot of fun once you get your head around it, but I've got to warn here today, it's definitely going to take a little bit of patience as you just kind of dive into this world. It definitely kind of drip feeds that information through, but it still can be quite frankly, pretty overwhelming. Now, alongside the core game here, then we've got a ton of DLC as well. And now this is all accessible from the main menu. But what I really appreciate is if you click onto each one, it's actually gonna tell you the requirements to access it. So where in the world, where in the game must you be so you can now unlock this quest? So I definitely say, once you've maybe spent an hour or two with the game, go take a look here, see what's going on. Just make sure you're aware of what other, I guess, missions, whatever quests, whatever storylines you could be tackling as you do progress through that main adventure. So what did I say? Well, you're looking at it on screen right now. It does hit 30, as I say, but when you do get into some of the wider locations or more things are appearing in front of you, you are going to see kind of mid to low 20s. Now, it's not as bad as it sounds, honestly. Having been hands-on, I didn't feel like it felt anywhere near that until I actually jumped into the analysis. The horse chase held up surprisingly well, which is a good sign for when you're traveling across wide open locations. And then finally, that first town with the rain effects, that was sort of the mid 20 mark, but I was impressed they managed to pull all of the visual effects in here. You will notice things like small open flames in the open world definitely play a part on the frame rate. You'll also notice there's quite a lot of anti-aliasing and we're gonna get into the core graphics in a second, but that's clearly been let's say compromised as much as they possibly could. One thing with performance that really did surprise me though was actually the load screens. This game is notorious for longer load screens and here, honestly, pretty impressive. In fact, once I'm in the game, I actually had no issues at all with them. The first one jumping in definitely on the longer side, but after that, it really is very snappy getting you to the action. So when it comes to that performance, of course, to make all of this happen, they had to make compromises. And I'm gonna say, that was expected to be on the visuals, but I am still impressed. The resolution has, of course, taken a hit. But yeah, I think the world generally does everything it needs to. It looks good. There is clear popping in this world. And you can also see some of the tricks they've used, especially in faster moments, such as horseback. You know, not only is the popping going to be more apparent, more frequent in these moments, but you can also see some of the characters in the background. They've reduced the frames for the characters in the distance, and that's definitely helping with that processing. This is why I wanted to check a large open area on that opening horse chase, because that's gonna be by far the most demanding when it comes to the visuals. Now, I will say some areas can appear a bit dark. I was in a few footpaths that definitely a little tough to navigate. They've lost some of that lighting detail, and also the menu text and the directions, the compass at the top of the screen, that can be a little on the small side at times, especially with that extra pixelation from the resolution drop. But generally, I've been able to more than comfortably make my way through the world. And I still think it's kept a lot of the character because the world is incredibly impressive. My understanding is they worked with historians to really build up a location that was very realistic and really is a pleasure to explore the location. When it comes to the audio, then that's obviously something I'm going to reserve my judgment on. We're very early days. The music is impressive in this game. At times I did find back in the day, it could be a little quiet at times, just some locations you'd be talking to someone and it's almost like there's not too much going on around you when there's maybe a bustling city. But maybe that's changed and obviously I haven't seen it in the Switch build. I doubt that is the case. But when I'm working with Japanese audio for the voice actors, definitely very difficult for me to pass any sort of realistic judgment that I'd be absolutely comfortable with telling you all. When it comes to the install size of Kingdom Come Deliverance on the Switch, the initial download is 14.4 gig if you are going the eShop route. Now on top of that, there is a patch. There may be more as we reach that Western release, but currently it stands 14.7 gig. See, I think overall I'm a massive fan of this game. It can be a little janky at times, but it got so much right back when it released in 2018, and that is still very much the case. I played it as recently as maybe a couple of years back now. It's just got this great story. Henry's a fantastic character. I love the world. I love the setting. And yeah, I think it's got interesting mechanics. You know, this combination of almost minor survival elements with that kind of, I guess, medieval combat. It's really something unique that you don't get to see all that often, especially... That was the case when this game released back in 2018. I just think the game 
demonstrates an appreciation for the period with an aim to reflect realistic environments and it looks really impressive. I was always excited to reach new areas, meet new characters and kind of see how we would evolve as a character. You know, you're going to be finding new equipment, new armor, new weapons and you can really start to shape this character as you please. I also really enjoyed playing into the stealth elements of the game, breaking into properties and stealing goods like sure yeah i know you're probably supposed to be a better character than that but it gives you the option love to take advantage of it so yeah kingdom come deliverance after the first couple of hours on the switch i'm gonna say this is a impressive port once again this game should have really been one of those impossible games to get on the hardware but like the witcher 3 saber have delivered once again yes there is compromises such as the resolution such as the popping such as the reduced frames for certain characters in the background. But what they've delivered is a game that this far has been relatively stable, and it seems to maintain a lot of the effects they were hoping to achieve back at that original release. You know, I had a feeling they were going to remove that rainstorm entirely in the opening moments, and that wasn't the case. Instead, they've delivered a drop in frame rate that actually doesn't feel bad at all, and... Yeah, I think if you're new to this world, you're going to find a lot here to enjoy. Now, as a warning, once again, there are some challenges. The map is a little difficult to follow at times using the compass at the top of the screen, purely down to resolution. The text is on the smaller side, but I did check it out handheld. It was still manageable because that smaller screen definitely sharpens up the focus. And yeah, just come here knowing it's going to kick your ass more often than not. This is not an easy game. They didn't want it to be that way and this is me simply playing on normal difficulty and if one of these enemy soldiers catches me currently i am absolutely gonna be dead in seconds so will you be checking out kingdom come deliverance let us know in the comments with that hit subscribe join us here for reviews deals news and list daily and i'll see you all on the next video thanks everyone